All right, um, let's we'll go ahead and get started. I know we'll have more people trickle in, but we want to be respectful of Mike's time. So um, today on the call is Mike Miller, who's with Department of Workforce Services. And uh, there are changes coming to unemployment insurance that we wanted you all to be aware of for next year so that you can properly budget and properly be aware of it. Um, you'll definitely want to share this with your a HR and operations people as well. So Mike, take it away. Great. Thank you, Crystal. So uh, Crystal can share my contact information with you. And if in the future you have any questions about unemployment insurance, taxes, uh, I'm the tax guy. If you have questions specific to eligibility, so whether you or, or an employee or former employee is eligible and how that might impact your organization, you can start with me. And if I don't have the details, I'll track it down for you. So a quick history, I actually have worked in the Unemployment Insurance Claims Center where the new claims are established. Uh, initial adjudication, and that's the folks that make the determination of eligibility and whether to relieve the employer or charge the employer for those benefits. I've worked for over a decade in the appeals unit as an administrative law judge and uh, for about the last eight years in the tax division. Uh, it's kind of funny by uh, statute were called contributions. So uh, in the state of Utah, employers actually pay an unemployment insurance contribution, not a tax. But <laughs> call it what you want, it's still a tax. And my team's responsible for collecting the, the contribution or the tax and managing the trust fund. And so uh, Crystal said that you all might have some specific questions and we can jump right into questions. I can give a quick overview of unemployment and, and what 2021 is gonna hold for you. Um, Crystal, did you have a, an idea of which direction you wanna go? I'm, my time is yours, so whatever you guys need, we can- Yeah, why don't you give the overview first and then um, and people can hear how the rates are changing and then we can take specific questions. Perfect, yeah. So uh, unemployment insurance is a federal program. It's unique, it's administered by the states. So each state has their own rules. Uh, by and large, the rules are very similar state to state. So if you're a, a multi-state employer with employees in different states, uh, Colorado, Idaho, Wyoming, Florida, we're all gonna have pretty much the same guidelines, uh, but they're gonna be different in some regards. Uh, unemployment insurance is uh, operated on standard insurance principles. So if you think of your automobile insurance, uh, for those of you with teen age drivers, you know that your rates increased. And then if those teen drivers have lots of speeding tickets and lots of accidents, then your rates really, really increase, right? Now the insurance industry knows uh, high risk drivers and they are uh, typically going to assign a higher rate uh, to cover themselves. Unemployment operates the same way. So you, in this example, would be the policyholder, and the more of your drivers or workers that file a claim and are found eligible and that actually paid some sort of benefit, that counts as a claim uh, and your rate could increase. And rates only increase once a year, and that's January 1st of each year. So in about a month, less than a month now, we are going to push a button on our computer and I'm oversimplifying this and this huge calculation process is going to take place. It's going to look backwards at your last four years of experience or how many claims that were filed. And then it's gonna project that forward and say for 2021, your tax rate needs to be this much. It either needs to go up or down or stay the same based on your history of claims, okay? Now, some of you, uh, Crystal tells me, are actually what we call a reimbursable employer. So some employers every quarter report their wages, the wages of their workers, the name and social security number, and then they pay a quarterly payroll tax, their unemployment tax. That's called a contributory employer. Uh, reimbursable employers are governmental entities federally recognized Indian tribes and certain nonprofit organizations, which I assume would uh, encompass a lot of you, your business models. So in that case, you do not receive a tax rate 
uh, you don't get a new notice. Uh, what you do is you pay every single month. So uh, October 31st, uh, we start looking at your history for the month and November 1st, our system is going to send a bill to your agency or your organization. And that bill will ask you to pay or re recoup or uh, well, just make a payment to unemployment insurance for every dollar that we have paid out to your former workers or current workers whose hours have been reduced, okay? So it's just a dollar for dollar reimbursement. You may be asking yourself, why on we sign up to pay unemployment insurance every month instead of only four times a year? Typically it saves you money. So reimbursable employers, uh, the federal government has carved out a little niche for you uh, realizing that nonprofits uh, have, uh, you know, that benefit to the community. And so they're going to allow you to uh, pay only if a former employee or current employee whose hours have been reduced or maybe been furloughed, only if they're eligible. And it's just a dollar for dollar. Uh, your competitors or any contributory employer uh, is going to be paying based on a tax rate. And that tax rate also includes any benefit costs it could not be recouped. So let's say we have a large employer in Utah that closes its doors and lays off 200 employees. If they're a contributory employer, what I would normally do is adjust their tax rate to recoup the payment of those benefits over the next several years. But if that company's out of business, there's nobody to charge. So that gets socialized and rolled out. And each employer that's a contributory employer in the state of Utah would pay a a, a slight increase in their social costs, okay? So Crystal, I assume we've got mostly reimbursable employers, but probably some contributory employers on the line. Is that right? Yes, are any of you not reimbursable who's on? Okay. Okay, right. so Wendy, Steve. you're contributing. Yeah, Wendy, I think Laura Brown and Steve, yeah. Okay, so for the for those of you that are contributory, let me just uh, real quick, and then we can uh, talk reimbursable as well. So, uh, for contributory employers, uh, the CARES Act helped uh, with your costs. So, from uh, mid March through mid April, any unemployment insurance claims costs attributable to COVID nineteen were socialized. Okay, so what that means is those costs will not affect your unemployment insurance tax rate for 2021. Okay, and that's because instead of charging Wendy's uh, organization uh, for those unemployment insurance claims, they're going to be spread out among the almost 90,000 employers in Utah. Okay, so and again, it's COVID-related unemployment insurance claim costs from mid-March through mid-August were socialized or shared by all contributory employers in the state of Utah, okay? Now, as of March 16th, any COVID-related costs that you might experience will be charged uh, to your company. However, the... Uh, computation period for 2021 unemployment insurance tax ends June 30th, okay? So that's nice. What that means is for 2021, it could have been a lot worse, but it's not gonna be as bad as it could have been, okay? So for 2021, will your taxes increase? Absolutely. Uh, but will they increase uh, significantly because of COVID-19? No, they're not going to. One of the factors in um, when we figure out your taxes, we're going to look backwards for four years. We're going to compare your benefit costs. And again, a benefit cost is any unemployment benefits paid to your employees. We're gonna compare that to your wages. And, and that gives us something called a benefit ratio. We then have a social cost, and that's any cost that can't be attributed to one employer. And then we have a reserve factor, and that's just a number that I can adjust up or down to maintain a healthy unemployment insurance trust fund, okay? So for, for 2020, the social cost for you contributory employers is 0 
That's $36.60 per worker. Okay. Next year, it will increase to 0 0.002. It's going to double. So that's $73.20 per worker. Now, the legislature uh, actually froze it at 0.2. Based on our projections, it probably could have come as high as 0 0.003, but they locked it at 0 0.002. Now, they're hedging their bets that we're going to recover quicker uh, than our unemployment formula would project. So this is risky business because if we're going to prevent the formula from jumping to 0 0.003, that leaves money in your hands to run your business, which is what we all want. But we also increase our risk of bankrupting the fund. Okay. Um, I had a meeting oh, a week or so ago uh, with Crystal and some others. And at that point, uh, 19 states have already bankrupted their unemployment fund. Okay. Uh, 10 more states have dipped into the CARES Act funding to put into their unemployment fund to avoid bankrupting it. Two more states have asked for uh, help from the federal government to loan them some money. And then two additional states on top of that had paid out over 75% of their unemployment insurance trust fund. So they're getting hit hard. The problem with if you go insolvent, uh, you have to raise taxes and or reduce the payment of benefits. Um, and you typically borrow money from the feds. And anytime you get into a business deal with the feds, you lose control of how you manage your business, right? So Utah being a, a fiscally conservative state tries to avoid that at all costs. So we're rolling the dice by locking in that social cost at 0 0.002 instead of 0 0.003 that we're going to recover. So, so far so good. It, it's looking pretty good. Utah, by the way, has depleted 29% of its trust fund. Okay, so we're a third down. So we've got two thirds left. By statute, we are required to have a minimum and we cannot exceed a maximum. So it's not like the federal deficit that we can just keep adding and adding and adding to. Once we get an adequate reserve, by statute, I'm required to start cutting tax rates. And we've done that for the last several years because we've had this 10 year uh, stretch of really good, for, the, for most businesses, a 10 year stretch of really good uh, economic growth. Okay, so last thing I'll say for contributory employers, uh, March or November 15th, mid-November is when we calculate all those rates and then we will send you your new tax rate for 2021. It usually hits your, if you signed up for electronic correspondence, uh, you'll see that around Thanksgiving. And if you are snail mail, you'll see that also around Thanksgiving, maybe one or two days later, okay? And again, if you have specific questions related to your tax rate, just get my contact information from Crystal and uh, I can track it down for you. I have a really good team of specialists here that it's the employer accounts team and they're really, really, really good at that. Okay, before I move on to reimbursables, any questions then from our uh, contributory employers? Okay, I'm, I'm seeing head shaking, so that's a good sign. Okay, let's jump to reimbursable employers then. So uh, hopefully you're, you are aware that the CARES Act carved out a nice little uh, benefit to help you all and initially, uh, the federal government said, um, we're going to allow states to credit 50% of what the reimbursable employer owes, but only if they pay 100% first. So let me give an example. Uh, the original CARES Act said that, say, for the month of September 2020, your organization had some workers file for unemployment benefits to the tune of $2,000. So $2,000 in unemployment benefits came out of the unemployment trust fund, was paid to your workers. October 1st, you would have received a bill for $2,000. The CARES Act originally said you had to pay the full $2,000. And then for November's bill, my sis I could program my system to give you a $1,000 credit for November. Okay, so we programmed our system that way, and then uh, it was changed. So fortunately now for reimbursable employers, you do not need to pay 
the $2,000. So now the current uh, program is our system will credit your account up front. So back to my example, if $2,000 in benefits were paid to your employees for the month of September, your October bill would only show $1,000 as owed. Now, as you can imagine, because the federal government changed the program midstream, there's going to be a little mix up in bills until everything gets caught up. So all I do is ask you to give it a month. And if things aren't looking right, again, contact me, okay? Uh, we had um, a few accounts where the billing was just off enough where I had to have a programmer go in and find it, and then we gave them the credit that they needed. And the, the largest amount, it was a difference of like $124. So I know it, in these times, every penny counts. So don't leave money on the table. If there's something wrong, make sure you reach out to me, uh, and then I can investigate and make sure you're taken care of. Okay. So reimbursable employers, as you know, you will not receive a tax rate for 2021 because you don't have a tax rate. You just pay as benefits are paid out to your current or former employees, okay? So if you go to jobs.utah.gov, uh, I have put all of this in the frequently asked sections, okay? So when I go to jobs.utah.gov, the easiest way is on the landing page, there's a COVID-19 button. I click that and then it'll pop up with a window that's purple and it says unemployment insurance. You can click learn more. And here it is, COVID-19 unemployment insurance. There's a heading employee resources and then at the bottom employer resources. Now a word of warning, I've submitted an update to our web team to um, update the CARES Act language for the 50% credit for reimbursable employers. As of this morning, they hadn't updated that yet. So if you go online and you read that you're required to pay 100% before you get your credit, that's out of date. So we'll get that updated as soon as we can. Okay. Um, so reimbursable employers, uh, no social cost for you. So contributory employers are going from 0.001 to 0.002. There's no social cost. You just pay 100% of, of what, uh, of the benefits that are paid out to your employees. Another question I get quite frequently- 50%, from, isn't it? Now? 50%, yeah. yeah, yeah, with the CARES Act. And that runs, that's a great point, Crystal. That runs through the end of the year. Of course, who knows what's going to happen because if you've been watching what's going on in DC, they're back and forth on different deals. So we're just waiting, right? Uh, if we have to reprogram the system or, you know, prop up another program, we will. We've implemented six different federal programs during the pandemic in a matter of months. So, um, and so that's always a challenge. And there was no additional funding to do that. So I know, <laughs> I know you guys know how to do more with less. Well, we've been doing the same thing. So, um, I think that's it. I was going to say that for reimbursable employers, a common question I receive is, what about an employee that is not laid off or we don't fire them, but we reduce their hours or we furlough them for three weeks out of four and then we bring them back. Okay. Um, the, the program is sophisticated enough to, to understand that. So your best advice to those workers, is just to file your unemployment claim and follow the instructions that they are given. They can still work and earn a partial wage through you or anybody else, honestly. They can still work and have partial earnings and still receive a partial unemployment check. But as soon as they work 40 hours a, a week or more, or they earn more than their weekly unemployment amount, then for that week, they are not unemployed and they're not eligible, okay? But if you have a worker, let's say out of four weeks, week number one, they work 40 hours, week number two, zero, week number three, 23 hours, week number four, seven hours. You tell that worker to file each weekly claim and the system will figure out and calculate if they're eligible or not. They just have to remember to report their gross earnings, not their net, and they report it during the week they're paid. And that'll keep them out of any overpayment situation. So your employees, your workers do not have to be 100% unemployed to qualify for unemployment. 
So that's one of the, the common questions I get from reimbursable employers as they try to flex and navigate, you know, uh, the, the theater's closed uh, or, I don't know, I, I think of Thanksgiving point, you know, their attendance has got to be hit and, and how are they navigating those tricky waters? So that's one of the common questions I get. Mike? Yes. Uh, um, the example you gave where it's kind of ebb and flows on how many hours they work while they'll receive unemployment, is the amount of compensation to them determined based off the 26 weeks that they can be eligible for? Or is it then also and stop at 26 weeks? Great question, Steve. So when a claim is filed, they actually look back, for those of you with an accounting mind, the first four of the last four complete, first four of the last five completed calendar quarters. So basically 18 months. We're doing a, a year and a half look back. And any wages earned in that year and a half, that's what we're going to base their their weekly benefit amount and the duration of payments. So every worker is different. Okay. Some workers might get $200, another worker might get $300, and it's just based on their earnings for the last year and a half. And then the duration, eight weeks, 13 weeks, up to a maximum of 26 weeks is also based on their earnings. And then let's say that that worker files for unemployment and is determined to be eligible for $400 a week for 20 weeks. During that 20 weeks, if they have some work with your company, that means that they're not depleting their unemployment so quickly, so they could actually receive a partial check for more than 20 weeks, if that makes sense. So Steve, the, the, the weekly payment can ebb and flow based on their work and earnings each week. Uh, the biggest challenge that we have right now with the workers, those filing those claims, is they forget to file their weekly claim. You gotta file every week if you wanna be paid each week. And so that's maybe the, the pro tip of the day for workers is file those weekly claims. They just go online and answer a few questions and they're done. And when, when do they get a little reset, if you will? So let's say that's calculated and they work for six months, solid work, and then they're unemployed again. Does it fall back to that prior calculation? Yes. So when you file a claim, it's on the books for one year from the date you filed. So during that one year, they can open the claim, close the claim, open the claim, close the claim, as many times as their situation dictates. And then as soon as that year falls off, we'll look back at a brand new period of time because everything's shifted forward 12 months and then we'll do a redetermination or recalculation at that point. But great question, great question. That's some advanced thinking there, Steve. You get the gold star, that's really good. <laughs> He's like, twerk nothing. I promise it doesn't mean anything towards where we're heading. <laughs> I, I'm just curious. That's all. Oh, I wish we knew where we were heading, don't we? Yeah. Okay. I can go on forever about unemployment, but I usually put people to sleep after a few minutes. So <laughs> let's open it up for questions or comments, you guys. What, what's on your mind? And if it makes anyone more comfortable, I can turn the recording off for questions. <laughs> or you can send them to me and I can ask them for you. <laughs> In the chat. Well, I know, I, I know I'm not that good at explaining things. So uh, when you think of some questions, just let Crystal know. Yeah. And we'll put this recording on our member training pages and send this information, send that uh, link out that I've put in the chat that you pointed us towards, Mike, and we'll share your contact information as well. In any way. Do we end with some projections for the future? <laughs> so I had a meeting today with our uh, data people. Uh, we just call it the trust fund uh, update. So you've got to realize that the contribution or tax or the payment that reimbursable employers pay, it goes into the unemployment insurance trust fund. And that money can only be spent on one thing. And that's the payment of unemployment benefits to our neighbors and friends and family. I cannot by federal law, pull out any of that to pay for staff or programming or utilities or my computer. It's only for the payment of benefits. Okay. 
So right now, our trust fund, we're projecting, we're going to see an increase in unemployment insurance claims, uh, usually peaks around December or January. You can probably guess why. That would be those seasonal jobs, right? Uh, whether it's tourism-based or construction-based or landscaping or something like that. Uh, we always see a peak December, January. Uh, our projections as of this morning is we're going to see a, an increase in unemployment claims through January, February, through the end of the first quarter. And that's just based on looking back for 20 plus years. Uh, we do anticipate, and I'm looking at my data here, we do anticipate that Utah will remain solvent. It's great news for employers. If Utah, if we can manage this and remain solvent, that means we don't have to uh, enter into that loan agreement with the federal government, which typically comes with strings attached of significantly increasing taxes. So I think employers uh, in Utah were looking pretty good. Um, right now, as I mentioned, uh, contributory employers will see a, a slight increase. If you've got questions about your rates, once you get that notice, make sure you check in with me. Um, I think that's, that's about it. I mean, all I, I would really share with you guys, I got so much data, I could just drown you, but Utah's in a pretty good, pretty good uh, scenario. Maybe the last thing I'll say is this. If you've watched any of the national news, you've seen these huge lines. Uh, my brother lives in Kentucky, lived in Kentucky, and I noticed that the uh, citizens there would just go line up outside the Capitol to try to speak to somebody about unemployment insurance. Other states have brought in hundreds and hundreds of temp workers to answer phone calls about unemployment insurance to get their call wait times down low. We didn't do that because we didn't wanna bring in temp workers that don't know anything about unemployment. We figured it'd be better to wait a little bit longer and get the truth or the actual facts than have a temp worker just answer a call and guess. Uh, so how is Utah doing when compared to peers? Uh, the US Department of Labor just ranked Utah the number one uh, unemployment agency among all medium-sized states. There's about 24 of them in that category. So why do you care? It's not because we're gonna hang that piece of paper that they gave us as an award on the wall and, and make a big deal of it. That just means that of all the states you could be doing business with, Utah's pretty good. I mean, we're one of the best. So I, I don't wanna end with saying it could always be worse, but <laughs> uh, please reach out to us. I've got 70 staff here, and all we do is help employers keep money in their pockets, uh, remain compliant with unemployment insurance. And it's important that you remain compliant with state unemployment insurance because every year the feds ask the states, did that employer maintain compliance with you? And if we say yes, then uh, these are contributory employers. You get a 90% tax credit on your federal and your FUTA taxes, right? So anyway, we're trying to be of, of service to you all. And Crystal, thanks for reaching out to me. If in the future, uh, more questions come up or, or you want to get together again, just let me know. I'm, I'm more than willing to help out any way we can, so. Thank you, Mike. Um, yeah. If you had to make a recommendation to nonprofits, do you think it's better for them in the long run to be contributory or reimbursable? Seems yeah, like it's a reimbur point, Reimbursable. Yeah, reimbursable. Yeah. Yeah, I, years ago when I was a brand new judge, I went to a, a Utah a Supreme Court case. So as high as it could go here in Utah. And the, the argument was there was a reimbursable employer that had some benefit costs that they challenged all the way to the court. And so the attorney for unemployment insurance pulled up a, a, a poster board and and compared the cost that that reimbursable employer would have paid had they been contributory to what they did pay as reimbursable. It's night and day. So if you qualify for reimbursable status, you can switch at any time. You just call me as of January 1st of 2021, I can flip you over into contributory employer. You have to stick with it though for a period of time. You can't flip back. 
But by and large, those entities that qualify for reimbursable status, it's, it's a good thing in the long run. Uh, I think the hot spot is right now, if you've had to uh, have a bunch of folks file for unemployment, you're not used to those high claims cost each month. And remember, uh, I have a group of uh, collectors that will work with you. If you, can't if you cannot make your monthly payment, we'll talk about an installment agreement. We're going to waive penalties and fees that go with that. We're trying to do everything we can as the unemployment agency to not contribute to unemployment insurance. So we don't want to put anybody out of business. That's counterintuitive to the purpose for our whole existence. So please, if you are getting behind or things are looking a little hairy, make sure you reach out to us so that we can have one of our employer collectors work with you and set something up. And that's the same whether you're reimbursable or contributory. Don't let things fester. Just call us and we'll see what we can do to help you out. Great question, Crystal. Thank you. All right, any last questions for Mike? Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Really appreciate all you guys are doing to keep us afloat. Round for the next round. Well, <laughs> yes, thank we, you so much, Mike. It was really helpful to have you on the call today. You're welcome. And we appreciate you. You know, all you guys do to help out Utah's economy and keep people working and the money flowing. And, uh, and we appreciate all you do. So again, feel free to reach out at any time, whether it's directly to me or through Crystal, and we'll do anything we can to help you out. Wonderful. Thank you so much. You're welcome.